Um, emerging markets are being talked about in, in all kinds of unexpected places now. Martin, do you see huge potential there for investors like Macquarie? For new infrastructure, um, some of the emerging markets are very interesting, obviously. Uh, and, and the main reason for that is that I think that's where the future is, investing in new stuff that's going to come on. Because if you look at the OCD report again, it's all about building new things, replacing existing infrastructure, or... Um, coping with the sort of things that Olivia has been talking about um, in, 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 in those emerging countries. So I think if investors can get um, brave enough and confident enough with um, the regulatory frameworks that exist within those countries, mm. I think it'll be, very, it'll, be a, it'll be a big area of growth. Um, to the extent that the regulatory frameworks and the um, arrangements that governments put in place are opaque, difficult to understand, I think it will take a long time to get to get going. And there are players investing in, you know, there are funds that do invest in Afri you know, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, I spent some time with um, some um, colleagues from Standard Bank um, in the summer and <clears throat> at a conference and um, we were talking about P3s in the US and the kind of margins and returns that um, banks made on some of those P3 uh, financings. Um, and they were horrified, too low. You know, they were could uh, generate much higher returns investing um, on a project by project basis throughout Africa, an area which they know well. Um, obviously, there are risks inherent in some of those projects, which um, institutions, some of the institutions based in this city, might you know might regard as difficult. You know, political risks, exchange rate risks, so on. You know, macro risks, but um, but they're certainly happy with them. And um, you know there are specialist um, fund managers that are that are that do invest in in those emerging markets, and I'm, I'm not including now the the so-called BRIC countries um, because there are a number of funds that have been established to invest in India, and uh, you know the Indian economy itself is in the, is in a massive economy really, um, uh, you know highly educated people. Um, and that will be a vast powerhouse of the future. But outside the, the so-called BRIC countries, there are, there are, you know, there are a wave of investment is happening. Um, and, and there are people that, that do invest specially, specifically in infrastructure in those countries.